Jesus in his last week on earth was still attracting. He was still attracting people. As before, so now, it was perhaps most of all those accumulated stories of what he'd been doing. The stories of his healings of the hopeless. The stories of his acceptance of the unacceptable. It was they that were still intriguing many. And above all, that implied authority, that he had the right to do so, he had the power. The Gospel set for this Tuesday of Holy Week is John 12, 20 to 36. And it records the approach of some people known as Greeks. And in that context, the word Greeks means non-Jews who were nevertheless converts to the monotheism of the Jewish religion and who were followers of the law, at least parts of it. These Greeks wanted to see him, we're told. And there is no substitute for seeing. Seeing illuminates hearing. So two good disciples, Philip and Andrew, they broker a meeting for the Greeks with Jesus. And as it happens, both of them have been brokers before. They've been brokers and introducers of potential disciples. Andrew, right at the beginning, once introduced his own brother, Simon Peter, and Philip once introduced Nathaniel. So what happens at this brokered meeting? Of the Greeks with Jesus. I think that Jesus startles them all with words that are both foreboding and awesome. The Greeks and also the disciples see him and hear him say that all that they've heard of him so far will soon be revealed for what it really is. It'll be revealed in its true light. And the true light of everything that they've seen and heard so far is the glory of God. And he says, it'll never be so truly seen as in what is soon to happen. Jesus in this meeting with the Greeks says something startling that his life is like a grain of wheat. And like a grain of wheat, it must disappear into the ground before it rises out of it and bears fruit. And so he says to the inquirers and also to the disciples who are listening, there is a paradox. And the paradox is this, that if we think of life as we define it, to be of surpassing value to the exclusion of all poss other possibility, then we will lose life as God defines it and as God offers it. Jesus says, join me in walking the other way. Join me in walking that other direction, which is the way of God that leads to God. And then once more, Jesus foreshadows what's going to happen on Thursday night in the Garden of Gethsemane. In this meeting with the Greeks and immediately after it, it says, his soul is troubled. And effectively he says, shall I ask to be kept from the pain and the passion and from my death? No, he says to himself, but watched and heard by those seekers and by the disciples, and now also watched and heard by a crowd who have gathered. He says, God's glory will not be seen if we avoid, but rather if we trustingly accept. And there is a roll of thunder. Jesus hears that roll of thunder as God his Father's confirmation. 
and he proclaims aloud that precisely by facing and submitting to the world's cruelty and envy and to the world's apparent triumph, those things will lose their power. He foresees that what most will pity as his humiliation when he's hoisted up on a cross of execution will truly be the showing of God to the world. Christ, hoisted in shame, will raise high the whole of humanity. The crowd is confused. The inquirers and the disciples aren't sure what he means. Jesus simply says, wait, listen and watch. While you have the light, believe and walk in the light. When our souls too are troubled, we in our imagination can stand with Philip and Andrew on that day. And we can hear Christ our light invite us to believe in him and walk with him still. Here's the first verse of the Easter hymn that looks back at Christ's image of the buried grave. Now the green blade riseth from the buried grave, wheat that in dark earth many days has lain, love lives again, that with the dead has been, love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. 